كذبت قوم نوح للمرسلين إذ قال لهم أخوهم نوح ألا تتقون إني لكم رسول أمين فاتقوا الله وأطيعون وما أسألكم عليه من أجر إن أجري إلا على رب العالمين فاتقوا الله وأطيعون قالوا أنؤمن لك واتبعك الأرذلون قال وما علمي بما كانوا يعملون إن حسابهم إلا على ربي لو تشعرون وما أنا بطارد المؤمنين إن أنا إلا نذير مبين قالوا لئن لم تنته يا نوح لتكونن من المرجومين قال رب إن قومي كذبون فافتح بيني وبينهم فتحا ونجني ومن معي من المؤمنين فأنجيناه ومن معه في الفلك المشحون ثم أغرقنا بعد الباقين إن في ذلك لآية وما كان أكثرهم مؤمنين وإن ربك لهو العزيز الرحيم الله سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد الله الله أكبر الله الله أكبر A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Win over your enemy. In this age of hatred and animosity, our all-loving creator has prescribed the formula for winning over your enemy. In the glorious Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 34. Nor can goodness and evil be equal. Repel evil with what is better. You will see that he with whom you had enmity will become your close friend. Do not defeat your enemies, but rather win them over. Win their hearts and win their minds. Beats TV, the solution for humanity.
Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. نکاح مبارک مبارک زواج مبارک مبارک النکاح من سنتی ما قال النبی هو الصحیح نکاح مبارک مبارک نکاح مبارک زواج مبارک مبارک النکاح من سنتی ما قال النبي هو الصحيح نكاح مبارك مبارك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again brothers and sisters where we shall continue the discussion on how we should go about in finding a potential spouse and how to do it With me is our Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad from the UK who is currently serving on the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and who is also the founder of the website www.islam21c.com Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh We want to continue talking about how we should go about in finding a spouse Yes, inshallah Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah I think in the previous episode we mentioned in fact the story of the marriage of the Prophet وسلم, to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. Yes. And we use this as an example of proposal. And the key issue is that the way people can find a spouse was not heavily regulated by Islam or by Sharia, which means that Islam gives flexibility mm-hmm. in terms of how to find a spouse. So it's a, this it, is the general. It can accommodate different cultures. Yes, yes. This is a good point. This is a good way of explaining. Mm-hmm. So I think we started the story of the marriage of the Prophet Sallam to Aisha and to Sauda. And to summarize what we have said after the death of Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was lonely with his children from Khadija mm-hmm. radiallahu ta'ala anha. Fatima, Um Kalthum, Ruqayya and Zainab. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, by the way, at that time they were in Mecca, mm-hmm. not in Medina. Okay? They were in Mecca a few years before the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Medina. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's friend, Uthman, had his wife Khawla. Khawla was a noble lady. She approached the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she said, Ya Rasulullah, why don't you get married? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Who? Then she told him, I have two options, two proposals for you. He said, who? Then she told him, the first one was Aisha, the daughter of your friend Abu Bakr. Again, see, who proposed Aisha? Who suggested mm. that the Prophet Sallallahu marries Aisha, although she was young, six or seven at that time? Exactly. A woman. A woman. So had this been seen as injustice or oppression or indecent or shameful. or shameful, then a lady wouldn't do this. A lady wouldn't suggest that the Prophet Sallallahu get married to a young lady. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, she told him, Aisha, the daughter of your friend. And then he said, what about the second choice? Then she told him, Sauda. Her husband just died. She's a mature lady. The Prophet ﷺ told Khawla that, well, I think women are more qualified to deal with these issues. Go ahead. So Khawla, radiallahu ta'ala anha, went to Sauda and told her, why don't you get married? She said, who? I'm an old lady now with children. She said, no, I have a very good choice. Who is that choice? The Prophet ﷺ, obviously, Sauda was very happy. So she accepted the proposal. So here, the procedure happened through what? Through women. Mm-hmm. Through a lady that was married to the friend of the Prophet ﷺ or the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Again, Khawla went to Umm Rawman. Who is Umm Rawman? Umm Rawman is the mother of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She visited her. She told her, Umm Rawman, you know the Prophet ﷺ want to get married. Why don't you wed Aisha, your daughter, to the Prophet ﷺ? Again, the mother of Aisha never said, well, Aisha is too young. How come? She never said this, yeah? Which means that it was a norm or it was 
an acceptable practice. And if it was something that wasn't, of course it would have been flagged up. Of course, because this is her mother. Exactly. Yeah, this is her mother. So she said to her, but Aisha was engaged or another man proposed to her. Who is the other man? Yeah, Al-Jubair ibn Wat'im. So she said, let me consult her father, Abu Bakr, radiallahu hmm. ta'ala anhu. When he comes, we will discuss the issue. So when Abu Bakr Siddiq came, Umm Rawma, husband and wife, sitting to discuss the affairs of their family. She said to him, Abu Bakr, you know, Khawla came and gave us this proposal. He said, seriously? Obviously, he was so pleased, overjoyed. Now the Prophet وسلم, is going to be what? Is going to be his in-law. Yeah, there will be an in-law relationship. So then Abu Bakr said to Umm Rawman, his wife, what about Al-Jumair ibn Mat'im who proposed to our daughter, let me first apologize. Yeah, and they rejected that offer. It was just an offer, mm. proposal. So Abu Bakr apologized from Al-Jubayr ibn Mat'im and he said, no. Some people say that Al-Jubayr ibn Mat'im was a disbeliever. In fact, most of them. They said that Al-Jubayr ibn Mat'im was a disbeliever. And at that time, it was not revealed that Muslim women are not allowed to marry disbelievers. Mm. And as some speaker said, subhanallah, that Allah Jalla wa'ala chooses for Abu Bakr the best. Allah Jalla wa'ala does not want Abu Bakr to marry his daughter to a disbeliever. disbeliever. And by the way, this is a sign point that Abu Bakr Siddiq is the second person in Al-Islam and he's the role model for us and the Siddiq. Al-Dhahabi, Al-Dhahabi, one of the greatest scholars, one of the great historians said that he was blessed Abu Bakr, and Allah Jalla wa'ala honored him. How? He said, any of the main companions at that time who accepted Islam, you will see a member of their family who did not accept Islam, except Abu Bakr Siddiq. Mm. His wife accepted Islam. Obviously, his children accepted Islam. His father, the father of Abu Bakr, Abdullah ibn Qahafa, accepted Islam as well. So the entire family accepted Islam out of the barakah of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. Anyway, so Abu Bakr was overjoyed. He apologized from the other man who proposed to Aisha. And then the official engagement took place. Mm. Yeah. It was also reported that the angel Jibreel brought the picture of Aisha to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, yeah, in the dream. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if this is from Allah, Allah will let it happen. Allah will decree that to happen. And that happened. And this proves that all the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in particular Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, was married to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through who? Allah. And all the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were married to him through Allah. Allah wouldn't allow the Prophet ﷺ to marry a lady who is going to be the mother of the believers. And who is going to be what? His wife in Jannah. Allah Jalla says, النَّبِيُّ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجُهُ أُمَّهَاتُهُمْ Yeah? And Nabi, the Prophet, is closer to the believers than themselves. Mm. And his wives are what? Are ummahatuhum, their mothers. Mm. So, Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala, anha, is our mother. Khadija, radiallahu ta'ala, anha, is our mother. Hafsa is our mother. Zainab is our mother. The other Zainab is our mother. Ummu Habiba is our mother. Ramla, bintu Abi Sufyan, is our mother. And so on. Okay? So, then the proposal went on and the Prophet ﷺ now officially engaged to Aisha. And then they had the nikah. The nikah means the contract of marriage. 
But the Prophet ﷺ did not consummate the marriage with Aisha, except after she reached the age of puberty, and we might discuss that later. So this is an example of a proposal. The way it was done? The way it was done. Different people have different ways, different cultures have different ways. The issue is, as we said before, that there should be a mutual agreement between who? Between the family and their son or their daughter. Mm -hmm. What are the requirements? What do we want? What do you want? What we want? Let us discuss it. You don't bring any person. We will not accept such persons. We will never accept that, and so on. So the okay. compatibility has to be there. Has to be discussed. Yes. Has to be discussed. Let us not say has to be Either. there. Okay? Because we mentioned that the age is an important factor. However, in some cultures, age difference can be acceptable. Yeah? And so on. So this is the main issue, the main point, which is using your family or using the social, the Islamic social setup. Mm -hmm. The point I want to move on from this, which it leads on to it, is when should we start the process? How early on? And does it make a difference if we delay looking for our potential spouse? Well, see, it depends on the context, it depends on the situation, but if the person is ready to get married, then he or she should start as soon as possible. Mm. Delaying it will not be in their favor, especially, especially we might come to discuss this. Sisters who are delaying the marriage, when they receive good proposals, then they should just accept it. Mm -hmm. Delaying it will not be very helpful for them. And even for brothers, when they want to get married, the minute they feel that they are ready to get married or about to be ready to get married, they should start immediately. Why? Because we have seen cases in fact, it is common to see cases where the brother is saying, I've been looking for years, years, two years, three years, four years, five years, to this level. Okay? Why? Life became complicated. In fact, this issue of this delay proves that modernity did not solve the problem. No. SubhanAllah. Maybe we'll look more into why that is yeah inshallah inshallah brothers and sisters please come back where we will continue the discussion to see at what stage do we have to start preparing and to look for a spouse assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh marriage or divorce What's islamic ruling solution or problem Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half every Friday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Confused? Confused? Worried? Worried? Losing control? Losing control? If you are a parent, these feelings may well be all too familiar. In a society in which we increasingly feel that we are losing our children. It's still possible to get it right. And Islam will show you how. Allah. Want to know more? Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we explore the ways to be. A good Muslim parent.
Learn a series of beautiful Islamic techniques to help our children get the best in this world and the best in the hereafter in 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent. Next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, to this discussion where we shall continue talking about how we should go about finding a potential spouse and specifically now, Sheikh, on the time. When should we begin? Yeah. So we were discussing before the break that the person should start as early as possible. Mm -hmm. Just make it simple, as early as possible. What would you say to this day and age especially, especially for our sisters who tend to delay the procedure because of career, for example, for her studies? Is this something that's not recommended? Well, I, I don't know. We will discuss this later on. But as you brought this issue, I strongly recommend that sisters don't delay. Mm -hmm. reasonable proposals. Mm -hmm. Our sisters should realize that brothers, they will look for young sisters. Yeah? When the young sisters get older, then the proposals will be minimum. Mm -hmm. We have so many sisters who refused many reasonable proposals. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, they did not get married. We can talk about hundreds of stories where the sisters refused proposals in the beginning. I mean, this is a typical scenario, by the way. In the beginning, she would say, when she's 18 or 19, something like this, she started to receive proposals. She would say, well, no, I want to finish my uni. Mm. Or I want to go to uni. Now this is a problem. Because once she starts uni, she wants to finish the uni. And uni is... Uni, I mean university. It's not a short time. It's going to be three, four years. In some countries, even in some situations, even five years. Mm. And the minute she starts, she wants to finish it. And even the dynamic is really strange and dangerous because she will start the first year. Okay? She said, I want to finish it. By the second year, third year, if she receives a very reasonable proposal, very reasonable, she would think, and her family... They will think as follows. They will say, come on, if she gets married now, she will become pregnant. She won't be able to finish her degree. And just, just one, one or two years are left for her degree to become a doctor or to become a lawyer or to become a teacher. And she needs to be a teacher because in the future, if she was divorced and she needs to support herself, she needs to support her children, etc. Subhanallah, I think this is a quick side point that some people, these days especially, sort of subconsciously plan for divorce. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, not plan for divorce. Plan in case it happens. No, as if it is eventually going to happen. Mm, exactly. As if it is inevitable. So, and instead of thinking, you are right. And instead of thinking that, okay, tomorrow she will have children, or if we do not accept this proposal, then we might not have another proposal. So they don't think of divorce. No, no, they bring it on board because they see the number of divorces. They see that it became a norm. And by the way, it became a norm. Mm. Divorce became a norm, unfortunately. In most Muslim countries, where we have statistics about Muslims, it became a norm. In non-Muslim countries, it is a common thing we can confirm this from our own non-maybe academic observation. Mm -hmm. I myself, I am involved in the Islamic Sharia Council and I receive calls through the fatwa line. I travel to many European countries mixed with many Muslim societies living in non-Muslim countries and divorce is a common practice, unfortunately. That's why in this series, inshallah, we'll spend good time to discuss divorce. Mm. We need to discuss it in details. If this is a problem in society, we need yeah. to try and address it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was saying that if 
you as a father, you as a brother, please, my dear brothers and sisters, listen to this. This is an advice from a person who sees hundreds of cases or maybe thousands of cases who knew what is happening in the society, who knows what is happening in the society. I'm not just speaking out of my own desire. If you receive a reasonable proposal, a reasonable, it doesn't mean a perfect proposal. Yeah, just go for it. Mm. I'm talking about, in particular, our sisters. And now, by the way, some wise sisters who were unable to get married, they always give this advice to young sisters. True. They tell them that whenever you receive a reasonable proposal, go Take for it. it. Leave university. We have some sisters who have written about their bad negative experience they had because of delaying marriage. Some sisters, there is a well-known case, it was written in some of the Arab countries about a sister who became a doctor and she's regretting now. She said, in fact, take my degree. In fact, a few of them have written the same thing, yeah? They said, take out my degree and give me a son or give me a child. See, for a woman, she's eager to get married more than the man. The man might be eager to get married maybe to satisfy his sexual needs. We will discuss these differences between men and women. Mm -hmm. But for females, she is more eager to get married more for other reasons. For a female to be called mom, a mother, and to see that she had a child who is hers, and to bear a child, yeah? This makes her feel that she is a real female. And this satisfies many of her psychological and emotional needs. And for her to be called a mother, my mother, do this for me. This for her is like the paradise of dunya. Yeah, subhanAllah. My dear sisters, don't ignore this. This is a reality. This is a reality. Do it. Do it if you receive a reasonable proposal, not necessarily a perfect proposal. Just go for it before you regret. Mm. And we are not talking about the reward of being a mother. And you know the hadith when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, who is the most deserving person for my kindness? The Prophet ﷺ said, your mother, then your mother, then your mother. And the story of Maryam that was mentioned in the Quran about her wishing to be a mother. You know, Maryam, the story of Maryam in the Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, Al-Tabari, the Mufassirin, the commentators on the Quran, they said that it was reported one of the Israeliyat, yeah, one of the stories of Bani Israel. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Hadithu an Bani Israel wa la haraj. Narrate the stories that have been narrated to us by Bani Israel. Yeah, mm -hmm. unless they contradict common sense or contradict Sharia. So it was said that Maryam, when she was young, she was unmarried. She saw a bird feeding her children. So at that time, when she saw the bird looking after the young yeah, birds, the small birds, she wished to have a young child to look after him. So she wanted to be a mother. Mm. She wanted to be a mother. Now, this story, although it is not mentioned in an authentic hadith, 